Hello, everybody. Adam Parks here with another episode of Receivables Roundtable. Today, I'm here with my friend Jason Highland from Attunley. I know many of you have known Jason for a number of years, but Jason, can you give everybody like a quick intro on yourself and kind of how you got to the seat that you're in today? All right, I sure can, Adam. I, I really appreciate the invite today. Um, well, uh, as Adam said, I'm Jason Highland. Um, I'm a 17, yeah, 17 year veteran of the armed space. Uh, quick rundown of the, the, the resume. I, I started my career with Ontario Systems back in the early 2000s and uh, spent some time marketing software, really kind of my, dipped my toe kind of into the collections world. And then spent a couple of years with Roger Weiss and Sean Ferris working at their agency in St. Louis. Uh, I know most of the folks here uh, in the industry uh, based off my decade that I spent with Billing Tree on the payment processing side. And then well, last year, um, I just felt like I needed to try something new. And lo and behold, I found a Toonly, uh, which is about as new and different as one can get from payment processing. So I've been with a Toonly now for about a year and really enjoying it, having a great time. Well, you know, Toonly is a very interesting organization. So let me ask you, you know, tell us a little bit about a Toonly and what you guys do over there. Sure. Well, we are, well, we just had our third birthday um, back in the, right after the RMA. Um, we are a machine learning platform. And now what's that mean? Well, yeah, just means right. we, you know, I'm going to ask that question, right? <laughs> I know, I know. Well, let's start with this. So we utilize the machine learning technology to help our clients well, make decisions. Uh, most people know us based on our prioritization, our scoring models. Um, but in reality, there's really no shortage of decisions that collection agencies, debt buyers, and creditors need to make. And we can leverage their data in a multitude of ways to help them make those decisions. So, for instance, I already mentioned the prioritization models mm. uh, to help them determine what accounts to contact, but we also have other models like uh, time of day. So when to contact specific accounts. Um, and then we have multi-channel communication models we're working on. So not only which accounts to contact and what time, but what communication modality. We've got all these new toys in the arm space uh, come up. It's, it's not just calls and letters anymore. We can text and email. Mm -hmm. And so these models help our clients determine what is the best way to communicate with specific accounts. Now I say accounts a lot instead of consumers because one of the keys to our machine learning model, and it's kind of an important thing these days, is we don't use any of the personal information of the consumers in our models, uh, meaning it's all de-identified data, account level data, interactional data, but nothing along the lines of PII data is used in the models. Very interesting. But, you know, as we talk about kind of like machine learning and, and what you guys are actually doing over there, now that we kind of understand the products themselves, let's talk a little bit about what machine learning is, because I think from, a, um, from an industry standpoint, there's a lot of people that don't truly understand uh, what the background of machine learning really looks like, right? Like it's one of those kind of black box things, like we throw data in, we get information out, but what does that really mean? And what's happening on the backside? Like, how, what is machine learning? Sure. Well, I, I think the best way to explain machine learning is to take a step back and maybe talk about the differences between machine learning and artificial intelligence, because the terms get used synonymously mm -hmm. a lot. Um, so I'll start by explaining artificial intelligence a little bit. So what, the definition of artificial intelligence is essentially programming computers to do things or accomplish tasks that until relatively recently, we thought you needed human intellect to do. I always use the example of, well, we could always use the example of the Terminator, but going a little bit more PG, well, let's start with like Rosie the Robot from the Jetsons. Okay. Uh, they programmed her to do tasks that you would think that a human needed to do. And she didn't necessarily automatically learn how to accomplish new tasks. If you wanted her to do something new, you'd have to upgrade her. You'd have to send her back and somebody would have to program her on how to accomplish that task. Machine learning is a little bit different. It is a subset 
of artificial intelligence. Well, what machine learning is, is exposing data to algorithms and then allowing those algorithms and those machine learning platforms to sort through that data after you've given them a little bit of direction, like what do you want me to look for? And then those machine learning platforms can, can kind of crunch through that data much faster than any human can. Mm-hmm. And they find patterns, they find signals. And then based on those patterns and signals, they start to learn. And once they start to learn what's going on based on those patterns and signals, they can start to do one of two things. They can either make decisions and move forward, which we're not quite ready for that in the world. That's that's a little scary to all. Going back to the Terminator here. Learning platform. Yeah. Um, or what they can do instead of make decisions is they can make suggestions. And that's what our platform does. It makes suggestions. Going back to what I talked about earlier, it makes suggestions on who you should call, when you should call, how you should contact them. And then we, we leverage that technology to help our clients make those decisions. Okay. Well, it makes a lot of sense. It sounds like you guys have some really interesting things going on over there. And I know at least from the experiences I've had, it's been a great organization. So, you know, let's, let's kind of take the conversation a little bit to the, the personal side of the world, right? Because one of the things that you and I talked about at the beginning of COVID was like you went through a job change like right at the beginning here. Um, and yeah. so I think it's a really interesting kind of personal story, one for people to just kind of know about you, but also for those that also went through it. I think it's always good to hear one of the success stories that kind of came from COVID. So, you know, can you tell everybody just a little bit about, you know, kind of how that went down and, and what your personal story was at the beginning of COVID and how you found the Toonly? Sure. Well, uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of a, it was a scary time um, for everyone. But uh, of course. what occurred was after spending a, a decade, like I said, with Billing Tree, you know, like many folks, you just get to a point where you're ready to try something new. And so in February of last year, I decided it was time. And um, so in March, I, I talked to my boss at Billing Tree, one of my very close and, and best friends, probably one of the greatest guys you're going to meet in this industry, Chad Probst. And I let him know it, it was time for me to move on. That was March 3rd. Um, and I have a lot of contacts in the industry. Um, I'd already let a few people know that I was interested in, in learning about their products. Mm-hmm. And I had talked to some of my collection agency and debt buyer contacts and said, look, you know, what are you looking for in the future? Because I kind of had a mantra uh, that I didn't want to sell anything that was marginally better or marginally cheaper than what clients already had. I wanted something new, a little, something more cerebral. Well, Thank goodness that our models are much more predictive than I am, because like I said, I, I, I turned in my resignation March 3rd <laughs> oh. and then March 12th or 13th. I forget the date. Uh, it should live in infamy, but I forget uh, everything kind of went sideways. And it was it was kind of funny. Um, you know, we were, my wife and I were on our way to the Grand Canyon and we're listening to the radio as everything's shutting down. And she's a real estate agent. She's got people calling her up, telling her that, you know, they're canceling their contracts because everybody was afraid. Sure. And in the same breath, I'm getting calls from people that I was talking to letting me know like, hey, we're going to have to put a hold, you know, put a pause on this. And so my wife and I kind of looked at each other like, what have, what have we just done? And, um, but you know what? Uh, it's one of those things where things have a way of working themselves out and, You know, I I learned a long time ago from a friend that said something like, hey, things will work themselves out in the end. And if they haven't worked themselves out in the end, it's not the end end yet. It's not the end yet. So I spent, you know, March and April, honestly, kind of blessed with the opportunity to to just talk to people and get to know. You know, I used to think I knew what a lot of the affiliates and partners in the industry did um, just based on some brief conversations with them. But when you get an opportunity to really spend an hour or two talking to somebody about their products and, and their roadmaps, you get a really good understanding of what they do and what they're going to do in the future. And when it came down to it, a Tunely just, it was just a product, a company, a, an entire situation. I'd never worked for a startup company that just really rang true to me. And I was very excited. Uh, I was a little worried the timing wouldn't work out uh, mm-hmm. with COVID and everything else. But I am what we kind of refer to around the co- the company as the COVID baby. I was the first one they brought on during COVID. 
And I haven't met most of my uh, coworkers just yet. We got a, we've got a celebratory party coming up, at, I think, at the end of the summer where we're all going to get a chance to meet each other. But I was the 12th employee, and then we went Series A in, the, in July of last year, and I think we just hired our 28th employee. So we've, I've had a lot of fun Oof. with this. It's challenging, but uh, I've never been in this situation, and I'm just so happy I found myself in it. That is a big growth trajectory after a series, eh? Um, you know, yeah. definitely, you know, a lot of challenges coming along with that. And we're probably going to want to talk about that again in some time in the future. Um, you know, but one other thing I just wanted to kind of cover with you, because, you know, you, you and I have done uh, a lot of video together, um, or really not together, but we've done a lot of video um, independently. And this is the first time that we're actually coming together to, together to do a video. Um, and just wanted to give, you know, get kind of your perspective on, you know, how the COVID environment kind of influenced that. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, there was a few things uh, for me. And the reason I got into video um, one, I have a wife who is very successful with it. And I used to always watch her doing these videos. And I thought, man, that, that's really hard. I, I don't think I could do that. I, I don't know if I've got the, uh, the skills to do that. But then I started working for a company uh, in the middle of COVID and I had really two choices. Uh, I could evolve the way I go about communicating with people, or I could sit there until COVID was over. Um, phone calls really weren't working because people were working from home now. They weren't in their offices. I didn't have all their cell phones. Emails, well, I mean, emails only take you so far. We didn't have conferences, which are one of my favorite sales channels because it's just where you get to really intimately know some people. And so I had to find a way, um, a different channel to communicate with folks. So I decided to just hook up a camera, um, got a few pointers from my wife, and I, I started making videos. And you now I get some people ask me sometimes like, oh, wow, you, you do that all in one take. That must be so hard. You must. Well, I can tell you what, if I showed you the blooper reel on my iPhone, uh, for any two minute video that I do, there's probably about 80 in there that uh, would make a sailor blush. Um, <laughs> uh, never fails. You know, the, the Amazon guy shows up and our dogs lose it. Uh, but you know what? It's been, a, it's been a fantastic channel. And, and, and I also have you to think because I, I watched a lot of your LinkedIn videos and I thought, gosh, you know, he is doing something. Well, I'll put it this way. It's, it's not always easy to be better than everyone every single day. It costs money a lot of times. And our startup company didn't have a huge marketing budget. But you know what? I could be really cheap. I could be different. Mm -hmm. And that's where video came into play for me. It allowed me to be different. I love that. I definitely love that mind frame. You know, for me, it was originally people didn't want to talk on video chats, right? Like go back to 2019, nobody wanted to jump on a zoom or anything and, and be on video. They didn't turn on their on, cameras ever. And yeah, and I'm the only person on camera. And then I realized that I can't go visit everybody. I can't go to their offices. Like I usually spend a good chunk of my time, you know, physically yeah. in people's offices. Um, couldn't do that. Couldn't go to conferences. And I'm like, all right, how am I going to stay in? Like, how am I going to make sure that everybody remembers me at the end of all of this? And for me, it was like, all right, you know what? Hey, well, we'll start creating some videos. And once people were comfortable, you know, actually being on camera, you know, people wanted to participate in these receivables roundtables, or they wanted to participate in video chats. And for me, it was kind of like that natural next evolution. And if you look at the web statistics, you know, traffic has adjusted dramatically since 2017. And looking at all the web traffic that, you know, my marketing company ultimately is managing, um, you know, we've seen a shift from roughly 30% mobile traffic to like 75% mobile traffic. Yeah. And we've seen well, I, the I, adaption of video grow exponentially. Yeah. And well, and, and not only do I do the videos on LinkedIn, but I, I found a program. It's called Bomb Bomb. It's pretty basic. And, and you know, I, I suggest this to anybody out there in sales. You don't have to be great at these things, but it's a way to make yourself different. For instance, I can make a quick video, take that video link, drop it into an email. And instead of it being a link that they got to go to, it, it, it has a little it has a little thumbnail and it's got my picture and I'll even use a little whiteboard. I mean, that's how technical I am. And I'll write their name like, hi, right. Adam. And I'll put it there. And what I've seen is, you know, sending out a random, you know, mass sales email. I mean, you're happy if a couple percentage of the recipients open it up. But I started tracking the bomb bomb because it has that tool. 
I was getting, you know, 30, 35% open rates because they were curious when they would see the thumbnail. And, and some of these folks would actually reply back to me and say, Jason, I, I'm really busy right now. I don't have a chance. I, I, it's really not the right time to talk about a whole nother platform. I'd like to talk about that in the future, but could you have a conversation with my sales reps? Show them how to do this because it's, it's just different. It's, it's neat and it's different. So I suggest any sales rep. Learn how to do this stuff. You don't have to be a, a, a news broadcaster to, to be able to express yourself and allow the other person on the other end to, to get to know you a little bit. It's not an expensive thing to get started. Decent webcam, oh. some lights, and go, right? Like just I think I pay you. 50 bucks a month for Bomb Bomb. Yeah, $50 that's, a month. That's perfect, right? Like keep, <laughs> it, keep it simple. Like we've been blessed with a marketing yeah. company that, you know, provides us with some additional support, but... Um, you know, definitely an easy way to continue to keep your face in front of people to communicate with people. I love the videos that you send out, you know, when you sent me one, yeah. obviously, like I called you almost immediately and was just like, this is so cool. Like, how did you approach this problem? So I love yeah. your creative approach to things. I love the way that you problem solve, Jason. I think we're just about out of time for today, but definitely want to continue this conversation and continue creating some videos together because I always enjoy an opportunity to talk with you. Absolutely, Adam. It's been my pleasure. Like I said, you are one of the reasons that I got into doing the videos, sort of an inspiration. And it's my honor to be able to sit here and chat with you about it. I hope somebody else out there learns. And one day, one day soon, I hope to have that, uh, be able to have that strong marketing platform behind me like you do. Especially and, a background like that. That's amazing. Yeah, believe it or not, it's actually a wall. It's not even like a fake background. <laughs> When we built out the studio, have, we did it right. I do have the, you know, the, the sticker on the wall. So I'm, I'm slowly getting- You got the branding wall. down. We'll, we'll see how things evolve off into the future. But for now, Jason, I really appreciate your time today. I look forward to seeing you again at a upcoming conference, I'm sure, in the near future. Um, for those of you that are watching- uh, you know, greatly appreciate your time today. If you have any questions for Jason, myself, whether it be about machine learning or marketing or creating videos or even his experience during COVID switching jobs, feel free to leave questions and comments below. Jason and I are both very active on social media, be responding to those. If you have any additional guests that you'd like to see me interview or topics you'd like to see us cover, please feel free to leave a comment. We're always happy to create new content. But for now, Jason, thank you again for your time. And I look forward to our next discussion. Be well, my friend.